Jess. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to the reading vlog. It is week three at Aurelium Academy. I literally just ended in my week two vlog like 30 seconds ago. Like how long is this video? That's how long ago I ended my week two vlog. <laughs> I have passed three of my classes and I have three left to go. I have also made pretty significant progress in the lore quest and I thought for this week I want to start with Amari and the Great Game. This is the book that will help me pass my Art of Illusion class. This is a middle grade book where you follow Amari and basically her brother went missing and most people assume that he is dead at this point but Amari is 100% convinced that he is still alive, he is just missing, and she is determined to find what happened to him. One day she gets this like mysterious briefcase and it has a message from her brother and it basically invites Amari to join the Supernatural Bureau of, I think it's an investigation, but it might just be like the Supernatural Bureau. I'm not sure. And so Amari gets invited to this summer training program. And then obviously like this is a message from her brother inviting her into this supernatural world. And she's like, okay, so where is my brother then? What happened? And she just dives head first into the supernatural world trying to figure out what happened with her brother. She's trying to follow in his footsteps and she wants to be a special agent at the Supernatural Bureau. I absolutely love Amari. She is so courageous. So book one was considered to be like Amari's tryout year so she gets to the bureau and once you're there because like all the people who go to the Supernatural Bureau to like work there are human in order for them to be able to do their jobs within the Supernatural world they get like a drop of magic given to them so that they can like have a little bit of magic and like function in this world but when it's Amari's turn, it actually turns out that she's already fully magical because she is a magician. Under normal circumstances, I'd be like, cool, that sounds amazing. But in this world, magicians have a history of being extremely evil. And like most recently, there was like this like centuries long war between magicians and like the non-magician magical community. Amari is instantly kind of like under suspicion from everyone around her and there's a lot of talk about like whether magicians are born evil and things like that and it definitely ostracizes Amari from her peer group. Year two is Amari's first year as a junior agent and we're moving forward with the plot. There is gonna be like a new magical situation for Amari to deal with. So yeah, welcome to the vlog. Welcome to week three at Aurelium. I'm now actually going to take you guys with me to get my hair done because I have an appointment in 30 minutes and I gotta go. So I will talk to you later. I think I'm entering a reading slump, which happens, but why did it have to happen 
this month? Like, why did it have to happen in the magical readathon? It's been two days and I'm only 150 pages in Amari and the Great Game. I'm about to start chapter 13 and I'm struggling. But I do want to make it clear, it's absolutely not this book's fault. It's definitely me. Honestly, if it weren't Magical Readathon, I would just take a break from reading. But it's the Magical Readathon, and I feel like I can't take a break until the month is over. So we are going to push through. I am absolutely determined that today I will finish Amari. So I don't want to talk about everything with this book. And it's funny because there's kind of like two plot lines in this one and they're definitely connected to each other but like the great game is one thing i will just say that it is a game and it is very dangerous but i really can't reveal <laughs> anything else about it without spoiling some things from book one and then the other plot line i do feel like i can talk about it's kind of like the bigger world problem and that is that there's a time freeze so basically within this world they have like their own government and everything and there was like a big important meeting where they were going to vote on some stuff and someone like sort of attacked the meeting they did like a time freeze bomb or something like that. We're not entirely sure of what the details are of it. And so they froze basically all of the important political people within the supernatural world because they were all at this important meeting to vote. Obviously because of like the prejudice surrounding being a magician, a lot of people think that a magician did this and a lot of people suspect that it was Amari. There are grown-ass adults. Some of them like beings that are literally centuries old. Century-old beings that have beef with 13 year olds. And I'm just like, maybe re-examine your life. You have bigger problems to worry about right now because what are you even doing? I have to laugh about it because it's actually extremely, extremely frustrating to read. So in book one, Amari was definitely ostracized and isolated from the majority of her peer group. In book one, Amari got bullied a lot. There's a lot of discussions about bullying in the book but it was from her peer group and there definitely were adults that were like negligent in helping her and providing the support that she needed but also they weren't necessarily like participating in the bullying they were just being shitty humans but in the second book there are adults grown adults bullying a 13 year old kid, a child, and like blackmailing, can you imagine, can you imagine being an adult and blackmailing a child? Absolutely unhinged psychotic behavior. It's so ridiculous and is so insanely frustrating to read. I want to just like knock some heads together and like it's meant to be frustrating. Obviously like this is the expected reaction on the reader's part. With the time freeze, the vast majority of the magical community thinks that it was a magician that did this like time bomb whatever. It's a bit more divided whether they think it was like Amari or a different magician, but pretty much everybody thinks it was a magician that did this. So Amari, obviously because of everything that's going on and the adults acting completely unhinged, despite the fact that she is told multiple times she cannot investigate she does start doing her own investigation that's kind of where i'm at right now nothing really crazy has happened other than adults having beef with a 13 year old i think from this point on the plot is probably gonna kick up quite a bit amari also this time is kind of collecting a, a couple more friends her friend from home like from her neighborhood she was able to sponsor him to come to the bureau this summer so like her friend is now trying out and so she's got her roommate and then another friend who was 
a bully in book one, but I don't want to say their name because of spoilers. So she's she's got more friends now, which I think is fun. They're kind of like a little bit like kind of Scooby Squad going on. And there is a lot of fun in this book. This book is is very, very fun. It kind of reminds me of Men in Black for kids, just in the sense that like, even though this is fantasy, like there is magic the atmosphere feels a little bit more on the sci-fi side and there's just so many like magical gadgets that they can use and it's just a really really fun it's not as whimsical as some other middle grade it's more just like silly goofy i am enjoying the book even though i definitely can tell i'm reading very very slowly but it's happening today. I am finishing this book. The next time you see me, Amari will be finished. I did it. Took me all day. I need to go and get in bed. It took me all day, but I finished Amari and the Great Game. I am reading so slowly. It's terrible, but this is a five-star book. I absolutely highly highly recommend this series i think it's so fantastic if you've got a young reader in your life go buy the first book so well written and executed i love amari and i just feel for her so hard in this series like you can't not she is just so compelling as a main character i don't think i want to talk anymore about the plot i know i haven't even said that much so far but again it's hard to talk about the plot when you're in the second book in a series but i do want to talk about a couple things first of all like it's very obvious in the first book and also in this one that the magician prejudice also is kind of like referencing racism in like the real world and honestly that's not to say there's not also racism within the magical world like regular racism and then also like magical prejudice as well i talked about this when i talked about the first book but i think it's really well written in the way that it's easy to make the connections but at the same time it doesn't feel like you're being preached at it doesn't feel like it is to in your face depending on the book i don't necessarily mind things being in your face like the messaging of the book being in your face it, it's really depends on like the book and how the author does it so i'm not saying that as like a criticism but i do think that it highlights bb austin's writing how clear things are without it being like over the top it feels very much like this is a book that would make so many kids feel seen and validate their experiences within the world, which I think is super, super important in a middle grade book. Honestly, the writing of this book is even better than the first book, which I mean, like it makes sense, you know, like as you write more, I would hope that your craft improves, but yeah, I, I did notice, like it's just so, so very well written. Another thing that I really, really loved about this too is that Amari, in the first book, she really only had one friend at the bureau, and in this book, she has that same friend and then she has her friend Jaden from home who is like in his tryout year, and then she has another sort of friend who was a bully in the first book but now like because of what happened in the first book that bully agrees to help them with like their investigation and i think that this book does quite a good job of showing real life issues and problems and conflict within what like a 13 year old would have to deal with within their friend group because you can love somebody and like still have arguments with them you know and I think this book it like did like 11 out of 10 top notch absolutely fantastic job of showing conflict within a friend group and showing how sometimes you can't always communicate the best that you want to and sometimes you lash out 
and hurt and there's just all of these instances and then I think the book shows like a really appropriate resolution and how you can work through these problems within a friend group and also making it seem very realistic for a 13 year old kid. I find sometimes in young adult, I mean probably in middle grade too, but I don't I don't read as much middle grade as I do young adult. Sometimes I feel like conflict resolution is too on the nose and it doesn't feel authentic to like the way the characters would talk like the dialogue but also like how they would behave. In this book it felt very authentic to the characters. I 100% believed all the conversations that they were having and I feel like they were able to experience their feelings and have their feelings be validated while still acknowledging the part that they played in the conflict and also having a healthy resolution to the conflict and like it's just phenomenal it's fantastic i also like the character development of the bully character and also some of the character development of some of the other villains within the story and i think that it is important to show both why people end up as villains and how it's not just like they're evil and that's like the end of the story like they have motivations they have reasons for ending up where they do but i also think it is important when you are in a middle grade series to show that yeah sometimes people start out absolutely sucking and they are the worst but that's not the end of the line for them that like they can take steps to repair the damage that they've done they can have a redemption arc and i'm not saying that like this bully character necessarily has like a full redemption arc in this one book but you do get to see them have a change of heart and them dealing with the repercussions of their own change of heart and you get to see that character's internal conflict based off of like why they acted the way they did in the first book and how they had that reasoning and they're just a little shit of a 12 year old kid in book one and now they're kind of coming to grips with the fact that their worldview is shifting a bit and that they were wrong and I think that that is an important thing to show in a middle grade book and I just absolutely loved that character development. I have honestly no notes for this book. I think it is absolutely perfect like actually a perfect book. It took me forever to get through this book and I definitely think I am getting further into a reading slump despite the fact that this is five stars but that doesn't change the fact that this is phenomenal and it's actually in my opinion a perfect book. Next up I'm gonna handle my artificery class. I need a book with keys or a lock on the cover and thankfully I have Starling House. I'm not entirely sure of like exactly the plot of this. I picked it from book of the month because it said gothic haunted house and I was like yeah okay of course I'm going to get that book. Like absolutely. So honestly I would love to give you a plot synopsis but I simply don't know what this book is about beyond those things. It is also short. It's like only 300 and like 10 pages or something like that. So hopefully this will be like a short quick book. I mean it is gothic so I don't know how quick it will be. Oftentimes gothic books move a little slow but at the same time like it's 300 pages so like it can't be that slow. I'm really hoping it'll just have some beautiful writing in it and it will really just inspire my love of reading and we can just get rid of the reading slump. I will talk to you next when I have an update about this book.
for <laughs> the close-up and the bad lighting. I'm reading laying on the couch and the reading slump is getting worse. I'm like roughly one third of the way into this book and I am definitely enjoying the writing style but I don't necessarily think that this was the correct book <laughs> to try to get out of a reading slump. This book is essentially like a haunted house story, sort of. Basically, there's this like small mining town. I think it's in Kentucky. It's very impoverished there because the mines are closed now. So they have like a power plant there that is like the main employer for the town. But like, obviously, that's very dangerous work. People are suffering. The power plant and the closed mine have had a significant effect on the local environment. People are not super healthy. They don't have the money to fix their health problems. And in this town, there's also this house. It is the Starling House. The house has a really long legacy because it was built by the widowed wife of one of the brothers that originally built like dug the mine and was like making money got super wealthy from mining this land and he died and she built this house the house is ultra creepy and also like sort of haunted but not like the way you would expect it to be haunted it's also strange because it's the starling house and whenever the current like in resident starling dies the house is inherited by the next person in the family. But it's also kind of like a little bit suspicious too because like these new starlings like for generations and generations like they just show up and people are like where did you come from? It's kind of obvious that like they're not all really related part of this family so it's like how did they become starlings you know what I mean? And so it's just all very very mysterious and the main character opal has been having these dreams about the house this is definitely a lower plot more vibes type of story which i am definitely fine with i have really like loved books that are very low plot high vibes but what is making me think that this is the wrong book to pick up to end a reading slump is that a lot of the themes about this book are loneliness and isolation and grief and like the trauma that changes us as a person and the effects that that has on us like that is that is really what the story is about is lonely people and connections and family and like that's that's really the what the actual story is about aside from like the plot line of the haunted house and listen <laughs> a story about loneliness is really not helping the reading slump it's making it worse but I will say that I do think the book is good and I'm loving the haunted house aspect of it. Every single scene involving the house is fantastic. The house is so creepy. The writing I think is great. It definitely isn't like all the way into the gothic genre, but I do think this is like definitely hitting the gothic vibes a bit and I like if this isn't like true like gothic gothic I do think it is like gothic adjacent and I am really really liking that I love the gothic genre it's one of my favorites by the way this is a different day than when I read Amari I'm just wearing the same sweater <laughs> anyways I'm gonna go now I will probably just talk to you when I finish Starling House so later Okay, I did it. I finished Starling House. 
I am officially in a reading slump. <laughs> so thankfully this can be a really short update slash close out the vlog because I can't really tell you anything else about this book because it's definitely vibe and theme heavy rather than plot heavy. I think that I'm not gonna rate this book on like a scale. I just don't think it's fair to the book because <laughs> I don't know what I would rate this if I read it again when I wasn't in a reading slump. So I think I'm just gonna say that like I really really enjoyed this book. I do think that on a reread I would enjoy it even more. This is a book that I would like to reread in the future and see how I feel about it then. I think that this is a book that you should pick up if you like dark fairy tale stories and you also like dark haunted house stories. It's definitely more in line with the fantasy genre than the horror genre though. So I think if you like things that are like gothic adjacent, then you probably will like this. But I don't think you should go into it looking for horror. I think you should go into it looking for some fantasy, like some fantastical elements. I think that if you like The Last Tale of the Flower Bride, but you wish the speculative aspects were less ambiguous and more about the actual house itself, then I think this is like really a perfect book for you to pick up because they they definitely have some very significant differences, but also I think they do appeal to the same reader. I also could see people who like Nettle and Bone enjoying this book. Again, there are very significant differences, but they kind of do have similar vibes. I think Nettle and Bone thematically is very different and like in Nettle and Bone the characters are also like very endearing and you really root for them. That's not necessarily the case in this but I think vibe wise Nettle and Bone in this book do definitely share some characteristics. I know that this update is so lackluster and I am sorry for that. I did my best this week. It's kind of a fail week. This magical readathon is like really truly not going the way that I thought it would. It's <laughs> it's going bad. Overall, I do think this is a good book. I'm going to need to reread it in the future. So with that, I have officially passed five of the six required classes that I have. That means that I have one week left in this readathon and I need to only finish one more class. I can do it. I can do it. I have plans for next week to see if I can't snap myself out of this reading slump. Will it work? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z because I could not tell you right now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it so much, especially with how lackluster this ending is. It does really mean a lot to me when you spend time here and hang out with me truly. Thank you so very much. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And yeah, I hope your classes in Aurelium are going much better than mine are. And I hope you stay safe this week and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.